Let's have a little evergreen forest. It lives right there. Oh, hey, I was just painting my landscape in Lupiro. I wasn't always an artist. I started my adventure here, in darkness. Wait, why is my character moving on their own? Hold up, a battle already? I didn't even want to walk here. How do I pick attacks? What, the character auto attacks? Oh, that thing gave me cards. These things must buff my hero. Wow, there's a lot of stats and information to take in here. Do I have to read all this? I'm just going to use all my cards and see what they do. What? These things spawn enemies that attack me? Why are you the way that you are? Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. Whatever, I'll stop using these cards for a while, but these rocks and meadows buff my hero. And check this out, if I place a meadow adjacent to another tile, I create a synergy and it turns into a blooming meadow, which gives you an extra 1 HP a day. Oh my gosh, did I just summon a boss? I didn't paint that on my map, I was nowhere near that part of my loop. What are all these palaces around the boss? What? They give the boss 5% stat boost for each one? I can't figure this game out. Like, why are my mountains changing? Where are these goblins coming from? And why can't I choose my attacks? <sighs> it appears that this is the canvas on which I painted my own destruction. I shouldn't get all worked up. The descriptions in game are actually pretty decent. If I just slow down, read everything, and maybe do a little research online, I'll have a much better time, I'm sure. All right, new game plan. I'm not going to use all these cards as soon as they drop in my tray. This must be where all the strategy comes from. It's it's not about picking skills or timing attacks, it's about finding card synergies and maximizing your loop. Like back at camp I can upgrade these watchtowers which gives you backup whenever you fight near the camp. This is amazing, I can now pack these nearby tiles with all sorts of horrors and rely on my archer buddies for backup. Sure it's boring to spend the rest of my loop walking around and doing nothing, but I have a ton of resources to farm and if I retreat at camp I can keep everything I collected instead of losing 70% of it if I die. Great, after farming and learning a bit I've unlocked some wicked new cards and upgrades, and I even unlocked the Rogan Necro class. I think I'm getting the hang of the gameplay now. I need to equip my character with random stat items. I create a sort of tower defense-like map with cards, only my hero is the one who has to survive the loop. And I get to paint a lovely landscape filling in my environment. Right, the landscape sort of helps you know how you're doing. Things like rocks and mountains increase your hero's health, forests and thickets increase my attack speed, and deserts reduce everyone's health. See? Looks like I'm doing pretty well, huh? Sure, most of the stuff on this actual loop is designed to kill me, but it's not so bad once you get the hang of it. Also, the act of starting and avoiding creating a new loop populated with monsters, mountains, villages, rivers, and suburbs fits the story in which my hero is trying to piece together memories and essentially restitch reality. I also figured out why some of my tiles keep changing on me when I place them beside certain cards or in specific arrangements. Many cards have synergies which change their stats and effects, like check this out, this sweet river doubles the effect of tiles next to it. It also transforms into an oasis if placed next to a desert tile and that reduces everyone's attack speed. I've learned how to wind this thing through my environment to maximize stats and... Wait, what happened to my battlefield card? This card used to spawn a treasure chest which dropped wicked items each loop. Now it's become a shipwreck and spawns sirens? Oh man, I thought I figured out all the synergies already. Well, how hard can a siren be anyway? Oh my! I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. Time for another canvas. At first I didn't know if I would like this game. Lots of people were fawning over it and comparing it to crack, but I was so confused and almost convinced myself that I wouldn't like it. But once I started appreciating its unique design and spent time planning and thinking about my expeditions and upgrades, I really began to fall for the addictive gameplay. There's a surprising amount of strategy which comes from knowing what cards can and can't overlap, which cards should and shouldn't be placed near each other, and whether or not you should play cards or focus on farming and leveling up instead. The day I spent maybe three or four minutes paused while planning out where I was going to put my rivers, suburbs, and happy little trees was the day I knew this game got me. I felt a bit overwhelmed at one point when I saw how many orbs of expansion I needed to farm in order to upgrade my base, and sometimes it was easy to lose track of where my hero was or what new items landed in my inventory due to all the crazy action on the screen, but in some, I really enjoyed the unique experience the game was offering. In my research, I even learned of a few secret bosses to discover and was happy to find out how unique and difficult they were to summon and defeat. I've made a few other videos with tips and guides which should help save you a lot of time and research if you check them out. If you love retro graphics and music in a strategy rich game which ends up feeling really simple and satisfying to play, then you might love Loop Hero. If you hate the fact that you never directly control your character and don't like the idea of forging a new loop over and over potentially hundreds of times, then you might not like what this game provides. And remember, this was a quick and dirty review of Loop Hero. Check out these tips and guide videos I mentioned earlier and drop a like and comment below to help my channel grow.